I just saw someone in the woods. Okay, very good. We're freaked. Who's there? Whoever you are, this isn't funny at all. The demons are an integral part of the story of Little Hope. It's the crux of a lot of the things that happen, and that informs a large part of what we're doing. The starting point for each of the demons was the style of execution. They're based on a character that gets killed. That then informs how the character behaves, how it moves, how it sounds, and those are all brought together to give us that convincing, terrifying demon. In order to make convincing demons, you need to ground them in nature. So what we do is we use our understanding of anatomy and our deep understanding of biomechanics and the principles of the way things move and the way things actuate, and we apply this to the demon design. We obviously start with the production design. The production design is a drowned demon. And what we need to do then is look for extra reference. We have to look at stuff like autopsies. We'd look at what happens to the skin when it gets exposed to water for a long time. We have to look at creatures from underwater. We look at various types of fish. Loads of images and real world reference helps, uh, although it's slightly gruesome. <laughs> this particular demon we're looking at is the one that's been hung. We didn't want to show the whole of this character. And right from the beginning, we said, let's focus on the areas which are the most terrifying. And so the overall silhouette of the character was to be like this twisted rope. Her limbs had coiled. And so we were exaggerating the metaphor of this hanging. A thousand years of being trailed along the ground, it had worn away her feet, the bones being worn down, the nails being broken off. She'd been in pain for a long time. The most key of all of the elements was the face and how we framed that, and that was that broken, twisted neck, one eye remaining, a tear coming out because it's that last remains of her soul. The noose was digging into her neck, and her tongue was actually so bloated and grown that that actually became a feature for us in the game, that that tongue actually becomes a grapple to get hold of some of the characters. To animate a demon, we would start with looking at how they walk or move forward. Some of them are dragging themselves, and then also how they would attack their victims, just flesh out the layout and the choreography of it. Mocap is a big help. Obviously, it's a lot faster than keyframing from scratch. So we decided to use it as a base for some of them. And then we would layer on top of that all the characteristics that bring them to life, even though they're dead. The crush demon in particular was difficult to work with because we weren't able to use motion capture footage. So that is going to be completely hand animated. So that meant we were really starting from scratch. All the other demons, we did use actors footage. So we have a lot of actors with spikes tied to them, limping across the scene. Let's get the fuck out of here. On the broke demon, we asked the actor to use various props to try and achieve the sort of movement that we wanted. And I think he did a great job. It was really successful. We've had to, again, add on to that to help with the weight and the, the believability. We take our initial cues for the sound of the demons from the visuals, and they look fantastic. But then we have to take the sound of the demons beyond the visuals to give them a really strong, otherworldly presence. We need each of the demons to be individually recognisable whilst maintaining that uncomfortable unfamiliarity for the player. What is that thing? So at distance, you might hear the chains clanking or the, the vocal screams. But when you get close up to the demons, you hear lots of detail, the cracking of skin, the creak of the chains, the breaths or the sound of the icky vomit. We really want the player to feel the breath through the sound of the demon on their face. Angela, no! When we're thinking about the camera work for the demons, one thing that was really at the forefront of my mind was trying not to show too much, trying not to lose all restraint. And I think that's a really easy trap to fall into with CG in general, and especially with games that you've got all these monsters that you've built and you've spent a lot of time working on, and it's really easy just to go straight to putting everything on screen. But thinking back to some classic horrors, classic monster movies, a lot of times there, the directors had to use a lot of restraint and just show little bits and pieces because they didn't have that kind of budget or that kind of effect to really make it convincing. And there's something about that that I really like that I wanted to bring back to Little Hope, so when I was directing the camera team, I asked them to show little bits, little glimpses, a clawed hand here, a shadow on the wall there, the chains rattling, whatever the key characteristics were of that demon. The interesting thing with that is that I think sometimes your imagination as a viewer fills in the blanks in a far more terrifying way than we really could, so we tried to build up that suspense, working up to this big reveal where you finally see 
full on in the light, this thing that's been hunting you down in all its gross, horrific glory. With the demon scenes, lighting definitely had a key part to play as well. It had to work complementary to what we wanted to do with the cameras, but also there's some very specific things you can do with lighting that really lent itself to this task. So one of the big ones was the use of silhouettes. The demons have really interesting form and really interesting shapes. They're very unusual, you know, these humanoid creatures all distorted and we wanted to use that without revealing too much so quite often we tried to use backlighting or the fog that's present all through Little Hope is a really useful tool for silhouettes as you can have this nice separation with a brighter background and then have the creature dark in the foreground. It was a nice way to make them feel even more gross than they really were. The Little Hope narrative is extremely multi-layered and the demons not only represent the tortured souls of the characters but they also represent the psychological trauma that humans can obtain through witnessing traumatic events. So when the game opens in the prologue and the main character is witnessing these traumatic events, we underscore this with really strong male Gregorian choir, which we use later in the game when the demons are attacking to really strengthen and reference that psychological trauma with the tormented souls of the characters. The Broken Demon is the most terrifying because of the way it moves. It's really unsettling because you can't anticipate where it's going to go next. All the limbs are breaking and it's all moving in a really erratic way. So if you were to try and escape from it, you wouldn't know where to go because it might go there or it might go over here. So that's the most terrifying in terms of unpredictability, I suppose, and having a deep effect on your psyche. Interestingly, when you work at Supermassive, you get immune to horror. That's one thing I've definitely noticed. The powers of horror somehow get lost in me every time I'm watching a horror movie. I don't get so scared anymore just because I see this stuff every day. But doing those demon scenes, I must admit, even watching them back as they were work in progress, it was always like fairly distressing and fairly horrific. So hopefully some of that comes across uh, in the experience for the player too.